Jamaica, we're rich. We're rich in culture, heritage, and history. Our cultural influence far exceeds our size. And despite obstacles such as economic instability and natural calamities, Jamaicans are famed for our perseverance and resourcefulness. On that note, hello and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I am your host, Audrey Williams. And today, I'd like to draw your attention to how we are transforming the agricultural sector to have abundant resources and reliable food supply. Also, we will highlight the importance of our education sector and the role all stakeholders must play in transforming the learning environment for national development. Don't you go anywhere. All this and more after the news. I'm Theodore Henry and this is your GIS News for Friday, June 21, 2024. Government is determined to bring affordable housing within the grasp of more low-income earners in the country. While applauding private investors' efforts to build housing for Jamaicans, Prime Minister Andrew Holness points out that these are generally geared towards middle-income earners. As such, he says the government must do what it can to provide housing for those at the lower end of the socioeconomic scale. For us to get to the next level of bringing the prices of housing down so that the average hard-working Jamaican who is contributing but can't get a benefit can get a benefit. We will have to dig deep in our land bank and make lands available where the price of the land is considered to the total value of the house, but subtracted from the total value of the house when the house is sold. The Prime Minister says that at the appropriate time, an announcement will be made. He reiterates that housing is an entitlement of Jamaicans and the government will use its resources to make this a reality. In the meantime, the Prime Minister is encouraging investors to take a second look at Spanish Town for development. Mr. Holness argues that there is an incredible opportunity for businesses to reinvest in the town's existing infrastructure. While addressing the recent official opening of the New Brunswick Village, he said residential and commercial developments such as this should be considered an anchor for future investments. The Prime Minister says he is optimistic that much like what's taking place in St. Thomas, the old capital will soon see its fair share of investors. Mark my words. You're going to see Developers, financing companies start to look at communities like Brunswick Avenue and some city, Greendale, Hampton Green. All these are communities with fairly good infrastructure. Roads are in, some have sewer, some have water mains. What is needed is for an investor to come and buy up all the properties and redevelop them. 120 ventilators are actively in use in the public health sector, inclusive of those donated to the government during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Ministry of Health and Wellness published a list of all ventilators donated and purchased by the government and partners yesterday. The list, which includes those in use, being serviced or to be serviced, as well as those deemed obsolete, reveals a total of 191 ventilators currently in the public health system. The routine maintenance, take note of service for maintenance, a very complicated piece of equipment. And in some instances of that 40, some are waiting on parts for servicing. The rest are obsolete. They are not functional. They, 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 they can't be used. And so there's a process that is involved in getting them out of the system. The numbers were gleaned from an audit sparked by concerns about the management and whereabouts of ventilators donated to the government. Based on that audit, there are no ventilators that are missing. There are, therefore, should not be any speculation 
or indeed insinuation that somehow ventilators are not being utilized. Dr. Tufton says the current number of ventilators is the highest ever in the system and is set to increase once those being serviced are returned to active use. Minister of Transport Darl Vaz says the government is determined to move with alacrity to establish a regulatory framework that will effectively integrate ride-hailing services into the public transportation system. He gave an update on the matter during a press conference at the Ministry's Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, PCJ location, on Tuesday. Minister Vaz emphasizes that the forthcoming framework will provide clear guidelines on the government's stance on ride-hailing operations. Some of the key issues to be addressed include fit and proper criteria for operators and acceptable vehicle types. The regulation should also outline licensing categories and ensure strict compliance with safety measures for both passengers and operators. In the meantime, the minister insists that these ride-sharing services are in an unfairly more competitive position than local transport operators who must adhere to the rate structures set by the transport authorities. Authority. And as it stood, or as it stands now, you have these persons using ride-hailing apps that are undercutting the prices, the set regulatory prices, which puts the Jamaican public transportation operators at a distinct disadvantage. So it's not just about public safety of the citizens. It's about fairness. While the regulation is being developed, the ministry is recommending that local ride-hailing apps be allowed to continue operating, monitored by the authorities. This is on the provision that they engage only drivers and vehicles that are PPV certified and that are authorized by the Transport Authority and Island Traffic Authority. In the case of internationally operated ride-hailing apps, the recommendation is that the owners and operators be required to establish a business presence with registered offices in Jamaica and formally engage a transport authority, which will ensure that only drivers and vehicles certified and approved to operate in the public transportation sector are allowed to register and access their apps until, as indicated previously, a comprehensive framework is put in place. Five outstanding members of the Jamaican diaspora have been bestowed the Governor General's Achievement Award for Excellence. They were awarded for demonstrating active and significant service towards the development of their communities of residence and Jamaica. The presentation of the awards took place during the 10th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference this week. Governor General Sir Patrick Allen lauded the awardees for their contribution and encouraged delegates to use their talents to support the youth. We must protect and nurture the innocence and potential of our youth, guiding them with integrity and compassion. The awards, in this award we honor today individuals of substance whose stories are not just inspiring but a testament to the human spirit and perseverance. One awardee, Dr. Pearl Jarrett of the London-based Jarrett Foundation, says she has been further encouraged by the recognition. You could just walk away, nobody would know. And then I would hear my mom say, you know, worry yourself. God see and know. And when I saw the plaque that I got today, I said, God, whenever I feel like I can't do this anymore, I want to look at this plaque and know for sure you see and you know. The Governor General's Achievement Award was established in 1991, and to date, over 900 Jamaicans have received the prestigious recognition. And finally, Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ is to begin conducting enforcement initiatives during the current fiscal year to improve property tax collection in several parishes. TAJ says the focus of the operations will be on communities that have a compliance rate below 45% and whose residents have the ability to pay the outstanding property tax. 
The activity is designed to encourage property owners to settle their property tax obligations promptly, provide service support, and conduct enforcement activities for chronically delinquent taxpayers. The first of these operations is to take place in the Cornwall Courts community in St. James on June 28 and 29. Residents will have the opportunity to settle outstanding balances as the Mobile Tax Collections Unit will be on location at the Cornwall Courts Community Centre during the period of the operation. TAJ says its special enforcement team will pursue several avenues to recover outstanding property taxes from residents who do not have payment arrangements on record by the end of July 2024. These will include the filing of a civil lawsuit, placement of a lien on the properties in question, seizure of residents' vehicles, and the garnishment of bank accounts or salaries. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. for staying with us. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining is committed to boosting nutrition and food security, encouraging inclusive agribusiness and increasing the use of technology. Our next feature explores the top priorities for the ongoing 2024-2025 fiscal year. and effective agricultural sector and a nation that can feed itself, we must prioritize research and development. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining is embarking on a transformative journey to positively impact rural farming communities and explore mining possibilities with the use of research development. The goal is to create a better future for not just stakeholders but all Jamaicans. Here are some of the advancements ahead. The Ministry has made a significant investment of $1.5 billion over a five-year period dedicated to expanding research and development facilities. This commitment underscores the emphasis on innovation and improvement within the agricultural sector. An additional $6.4 billion has been pledged for the continued rehabilitation of Bordels and other vital research stations over the next six years. Additionally, we'll be upgrading the irrigation infrastructure at Bordels to the tune of $130 million, procuring critical pieces of farm machinery to the tune of $20 million and moving to design a state-of-the-art small ruminant house at the Hounslow Demonstration Station at a cost of $6 million. We're going a step further. We are allocated an initial sum of $10 million to incentivize agricultural research across our tertiary institutions. In alignment with the overarching goal of ensuring food security, the ministry is set to establish a sustainable seed system. This is to guarantee a consistent and reliable supply of clean, affordable and accessible seeds that will bolster agricultural production across the nation. We're establishing a seed technology center which will not only be a repository of our local gene and germplasm pool but will also be a cutting edge seed processing facility aimed at optimizing swift extraction, treatment and the drying of seeds for use by our farmers. Farmers, I have also heard your concerns about the quality of seeds. So this year, we'll be starting the process of establishing a seed and nursery certification unit, which will stand as a driver for regulating the seed and nursery sector, seeking to ensure that the seeds provided in the market meet the requisite standards for production and productivity. Recognizing the critical role of soil in agricultural production, the ministry is prioritizing efforts to support farmers in adopting data-driven approaches to soil management. I'm pleased to announce that the ministry will be providing 100 farming groups across Jamaica with soil testing kits and training them in the utilization to ensure that before those farmers plant, they're taking a data-driven approach to farming. We're going to spend $9.6 million on that, Madam Speaker, but we're not stopping there. 
this year alone, we are provided $1.3 billion for our farmers. We're going to expand our small rumen and semen bank and our animal fertility laboratory to collect and store genetic material. Importantly, we are developing a herd registry and animal management system to allow farmers to register purebred small ruminants and to have greater access to animal records. We're partnering with Jamaica broilers and Caribbean broilers to train our people in artificial insemination. Additionally, we're installing and commissioning a newly in acquired feed pelletizer to produce feed using local raw material. And we will continue our artificial insemination program where we distribute semen to clusters of farmers free of cost. In a significant move towards uplifting agricultural workers, the ministry is spearheading the regularization of farmhands at Minadet States. We are taking them from contract work and making them full-time pensionable employees of the government of Jamaica. Under their new title, facilities custodians. To support the livestock sector, the ministry is launching a groundbreaking initiative this year known as D-Link, the Dairy Livestock Innovation and Nutrition Knowledge Program. We're going to be purchasing and distributing 50 new mobile milkers across our dairy farming clusters and schools. We will install seven energy efficient milk cooling tanks. We will build our gene pool by importing and distributing live cattle, embryos, and semen. Importantly, under the link program, we're establishing a technology center and an equipment lease program where through the Dairy Development Board, we will allow our small farmers to lease at concessionary rates. This is how you cultivate a better future. To further bolster the resilience of small farmers, the ministry will distribute 2,500 irrigation kits to help to mitigate the impact of drought and safeguard their livelihoods. Also, through Project FEED, the Ministry will create opportunities for youth, women and persons with disabilities to engage in agricultural pursuits. Under Project FEED, appreciating the challenge with access to land, we are reserving 25% of all new agri-park lands to be assigned to women, youth and persons with disabilities. Under Project Feed, we will be providing $390 million for youth farmers. We are going to be setting up a special portal on the RADA where the youth can apply directly for their benefit or they can go through their elected representative subject to verification. Under Project Feed, we're partnering with the Heart Trust NTA to provide youth and women who graduate and are certified in greenhouse production with a greenhouse or a shade house free of cost. Under Project feed we're starting a new small room and training program through the Jamaica 4-H where youth and women will be trained and at the end of the training they will be granted animals to start their agricultural enterprise it is youth who will shape the future of agriculture to revitalize the export of ornamental fish. We are starting an ornamental fish farming project. Our ornamental fish farming project will provide support to groups of ornamental fish farmers in terms of capacity building, rehabilitation of infrastructure, retooling and training in marketing, business administration and technical capacity development. In a move towards modernization and convenience, fishers, fish farmers and stakeholders can now access licenses and permits through online registration. The government of Japan has worked with us and they will be providing for the fisheries sector this year a 
research vessel valued at Jamaican one billion dollars. This will allow us to conduct abundance surveys and distribution surveys and really understand our marine environment and the impact of climate change. To preserve marine ecosystems and sustain fisheries, the ministry has a budget of 60 million dollars for the establishment and maintenance of fish sanctuary networks. We are forming two new fish sanctuaries in Grange Pen St. James and in Lucy Hanover. This year we'll be introducing a new initiative where at least 20 youth who have participated in National Fisheries Authority training programs will be granted a boat and an engine free of cost. This year, we will be embarking on what we call Operation Pipe Water, providing portable and irrigation water for productivity and empowerment in bauxite mining communities. The ministry is also launching a pioneering initiative, the Bauxite Land Lease Program, to provide land to farmers on concessionary terms. What the farmers are getting now is action, not talk, not politicking, action to restore hope so that we can harvest hope and mine possibilities. Hope that comes from the Bauxite Land Lease Program. We will do everything, Madam Speaker and members, to remain on this trajectory. We have come too far. We are not turning back. We are moving forward ever. Backward never. We are harvesting hope. We are mining possibilities. We are creating a better future for all. developing the agriculture sector, the government is striving to improve our education system for national development, and we are all invited to join the mission. In a globalized world where nations must empower their people to become innovative citizens, Jamaica is ready to set the trend, transforming education for national development. Led by the Ministry of Education and Youth, the mission is for a brighter tomorrow. The 2021 Patterson Report made it clear, we need to ensure better quality education throughout all levels of the system. While the ministry will lead the charge, we need all stakeholders to get into position to help Jamaica become a more globally competitive nation. Students, educators, parents, civil society, business people, media and communities, Jamaicans across all sectors can play a role. The journey to a brighter tomorrow starts now. Deliberate action is being taken on seven strategic priorities up to 2030. Seven pillars of change to transform education. Better governance for better outcomes. Efficient spending and enhanced strategic focus. Improved and equitable access to quality early childhood education. Improved quality of teaching and curriculum delivery. A higher education sector that is coherent, equitable and well-resourced. Developing critical thinking, lifelong learners who are creative, innovative and productive. Contributing to the country's sustainable development. Technical, vocational education and training built into the secondary level to support the development of entrepreneurial skills. World-class facilities and infrastructure in a technology-enabled sector and increased access at all levels of the system to equitable and sustainable funding. These are the seven keys to unlocking our next level of exceptional learners and critical thinkers. With a lifelong desire to learn, Jamaica's youth have the power to not only elevate their own standard of living, but also to enhance the well-being of all Jamaica. As we push forward with trend, we will create educational systems of success, assigning the best people to manage the process. Give more attention to early childhood education so we can stimulate excellent learner performance from the start. Empower our educators to create learning experiences that transform minds and lives for greater impact. 
build an aligned network of tertiary learning institutions focused on delivering accreditations that strengthen the impact of our tertiary graduates. Provide physical and technological learning spaces that deliver equitable access and resources to all types of learners and optimize educational budgets and resources to guarantee greater results from early childhood to tertiary level learning. So that Jamaica may under God increase in beauty, fellowship and prosperity and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Let's trend so Jamaica will continue to be prosperous and more globally competitive. Trend, transforming education for national development, changing minds, changing lives for a brighter tomorrow. One of the mission agendas underway to transform education involves improving teacher resources. Educators are being taught how to better incorporate technology into their lessons. Our next feature provides more details. Media and information are all elements the Ministry of Education and Youth is using in the teaching and learning environment to ensure the needs of all students are met. Time is so important. We have to let our students spend time with the media, whatever it is. So we have to present different the information in different medias and then give them the opportunities to spend time with the information. So don't feel you're overloading them. Give them the information. Don't let it be that they are in need of some information or content and it's not available. You did not expose them to it. Ensure that you utilize all the resources that we are presenting and give the students as much practice, engagement to spend time with the information so that they will get it, they will learn it. After we have exposed them to the media, you have given them time to engage with the content, the media. What is the feedback you're going to get from that information? How are you going to utilize that information? to make decisions for your students and yourself. There are the students that you can just give them the media and they will get it in whatever form you give it to them. So knowing that difference in your students, you are now better able to support the ones that you need to pay extra attention to. First, we want to look at our Google Workspace. It provides you with tools for collaborating. Class and those, some of those tools are their classroom, your Google Classroom, your Google Docs, your Google Sheets, Slides, and it also helps you to communicate. From there, that gave us the opportunity to give you your email accounts. This is how your classroom should really look with all your teachers in one space and a fully managed online school. By effectively managing their time, incorporating media into their lessons, and providing access to high quality information, teachers can create a learning environment that is engaging, interactive, and effective for all students. the end of our program. Get a recap of everything you saw here and more on our website, gis.gov.jm. I'm Audrey Williams. Bye for now. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.